Hey everybody, Ash here with Gen Sense, back with another top 10 list. So today I'm going over my top 10 most complimented fragrances of all time. I have done a most complimented list, I think for every year that I've had the channel open, but I have not done an all time most complimented list. Now I'm letting you guys know that this stretch is back to when I started wearing fragrances or started wearing them regularly. So some of the fragrances here, you're probably going to be like, how does that make the list? But I'll try to explain those as we go through. And if you guys are looking for a really niche heavy complimented list, this isn't it. Just letting you guys know that ahead of time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. My top 10 most complimented fragrances of all time. We're kicking this off with a biggie. It's one of the fragrances that probably got the most hype that the fragrance community has ever seen at one point. This fragrance got released in 2009. It's from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. It is the fragrance La Nuit de L'Homme. Cardamom, lavender, and cedar are some of the notes in this fragrance. And this one is known as being a killer nighttime and date night fragrance, which really makes sense because the name La Nuit de L'Homme translates to the night of the man. Yeah, they nailed that. For me, and for a lot of you out there, this is the fragrance that you're going to think about when you hear the note cardamom. It's spicy, it's warm, it's sweet, it's seductive, it's sexy. As of right now on Fragrantica.com, which is a fragrance database, La Nuit de L'Homme is listed as the number one most popular men's fragrance of all time. And it's for a good reason. This is a compliment beast. Now that fragrance has been reformulated a number of times. And there was a time period where the original first formulation of La Nuit Alone was going for astronomical prices. It's still not cheap, the vintage formulation, but it has come down in price a little bit. The hype has kind of died down to a more manageable, more normal level. Because if you guys were around a few years ago, this was catching just enormous hype. I do own the very first formulation of this fragrance, as well as a couple of reformulations that have happened over the years. Now, if you guys are not hardcore Lana Wheat Alone collectors, if you're not just hardcore fragrance collectors in general, I would say don't worry about the reformulations. If you're interested in a bottle, just go ahead and buy it. Is there a difference between the vintage and the current formulation? Yeah, there is. But for the vast, overwhelming majority of you guys out there, it's not gonna be worth the extra money to buy the vintage formulation as compared to just buying the current formulation off of a website like FragranceNet or FragranceX or whatever discounter you like to use. The current formulation will get you compliments just as well as the original. I know that there are some hardcore people out there that won't accept that and they'll say that I'm wrong, but in my experience, any formulation of La Nuit de L'Homme will get you compliments. It's gonna take us to number nine. It is a Versace fragrance. Versace is actually one of my absolute favorite designer houses as far as men's fragrances go. And sadly, this is the only Versace fragrance that made the list. Now I did wear Versace Pour Homme a ton, Versace Mano Fresh a ton, even Versace Dreamer a ton over the years. But this fragrance got me more compliments than all of those. It is Versace Eros. Some of the main notes here are vanilla, mint, tonka, and apple. This fragrance was released in 2012. I actually bought this bottle when it was released. I also have a 100 milliliter size bottle that I do use when I wear this fragrance. This one I kind of just keep because I bought it when it first came out. Like La Nuit de L'Homme, in case of any future reformulations, I wanna have this bottle. So this is really well known as a club fragrance, a very sweet club fragrance. It's also a fragrance that works very well in fall and winter. It has really good projection, really good longevity, and all the sweet notes in here really cut through the cool weather. They cut through the cold. While this fragrance has kind of gotten pigeonholed into being a club fragrance, it's actually very versatile as long as you don't mind sweet fragrances. Now because of that sweetness that I keep bringing up, it's gonna turn some guys away. Guys that are wanting to wear more mature fragrances, maybe uh, more rich fragrances. And for me, in actuality, Eros is a fragrance that had to kind of grow on me. When I very first smelled it, when I got the bottle in, I wasn't super impressed. But over time, given more wearings and given some very positive compliments I received, it definitely grew on me. And I also do love the bottle as well. Number nine, Versace Eros, great compliment getter. It's gonna take me to number eight, which is a fragrance that I don't actually own anymore. I had a bottle, a 100 milliliter size bottle, but I gave it away to my brother. I was thinking about picking up a bottle for this video specifically, because it is very, very cheap 
but I decided to just go ahead and do the video before I got the bottle in. It's a fragrance from the house of Liz Claiborne, Lucky Number Six, which looks like this, in case you're unaware. This has spicy notes, plum, and sandalwood as some of the notes. Now, Lucky Number Six is a fragrance that I wore a ton when I was younger, when I was working in the local mall. It was one of my favorite fragrances at the time, so I wore it constantly. It was launched in 2006, and you can pick it up for next to nothing nowadays. It's been described as a fruity, more tame version of Dior Fahrenheit. Almost like Dior Fahrenheit, made a little cheaper and for younger guys. It's a little dark, a little bit fruity, and a little bit spicy. When I was younger and I was out with friends or I was at the mall working in the arcade, I actually got a lot of compliments wearing Lucky Number Six. At the time, I didn't really know all that much about fragrances, to be honest. I just knew that I liked them and I would buy random ones as the opportunity presented itself. And I remember going into a, a Hot Topic, I'm pretty sure, and buying Lucky Number Six because they had a few bottles sitting on the counter. It wasn't very expensive even back then. I bought a 50 milliliter size bottle, went through that, bought another one, went through that, and then bought a 100 mil size bottle for my collection, but then my brother ended up wanting it, so I gave it away to him. And just never got around to replacing it. But I gotta tell you guys, Lucky Number Six was great for me when I was younger. So it makes the list number eight. Gonna take me to number seven, which is, believe it or not, another Liz Claiborne fragrance. And this one, more of you are gonna recognize. It is this guy, Curve. Pineapple, lavender, lemon, musk, and even cactus are some of the notes here. Uh, this one was launched in 96, so a while ago. It's safe, sweet, fresh, and fruity, and this is another fragrance that is very, very cheap nowadays. You can also find this in pretty much every single Ross and TJ Maxx store across America. It is still out there and it is still very easy to find. This fragrance at one time was basically everywhere. And I mean that, it was everywhere. When I was in junior high school going into high school, I think 75% of the guys were wearing Curve. It got lots of compliments and it was cheap and everyone seemed to have a bottle. Actually where I went to school it was Curve and then Adidas. I don't remember which Adidas fragrance, I just remember the guys always being like, oh man, this is Adidas fragrance, gets me so many compliments. And it was like that with Curve too. But basically just a ton of high school and junior high school guys running around, spraying this on, getting compliments from other junior high school and high school girls. And I would be lying if I told you guys I didn't wear it too. Now this fragrance does come across synthetic, for sure. Curve is not exactly what you would call a natural smelling fragrance. More than anything, it's just kind of a, a fruity, fresh, out of the shower type fragrance. But I cannot deny to you guys the fact that Curve pulled insane compliments in its heyday. That's why it makes the list to number seven, Liz Claiborne Curve. Gonna take me to number six, the only niche fragrance on the list. It is from Creed. The Ventus. Pineapple, birch, musk, and black currant are some of the notes in this fragrance. And this one was released in 2010. Now as one of my New Year's resolutions, I am not actually wearing a Ventus through the entire year. But this fragrance over the years has garnered me tons of compliments. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Aventus is more of a boxer dropper than anything else. Which is to say men like Aventus more than women do. And while I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I have gotten a lot of compliments from guys while wearing this fragrance. Men really do like it. I've gotten a lot of compliments from women too. So this one gets me compliments just across the board, I guess. It's a fragrance that has been cloned numerous times. It's a fragrance that has inspired numerous other fragrances over the years. Now, one issue with Creed Aventus though is the batch variation, which I have talked about on this channel before. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Each year, Creed releases lots of different batches or versions of Aventus, and none of them smell exactly the same. Some are very good batches of Aventus, others, not so good. Now, I did not have a 2017 or 2018 bottle until recently. I have not worn the 2017 or 2018 bottles of Aventus, but I have tested them through tester strips and through utilizing my wife. And we're not gonna go into too much detail here, but I will tell you guys that the 2018 batch that I got is significantly worse than the 2015 and 2014 bottles that I have. So Aventus today, depending on what batch you get, is not the same Aventus that I was wearing three, four years ago. So just be aware of that. Regardless of all that, Aventus makes the list at number six. It's gonna take me to number five. It is a Dior fragrance, the only Dior that made this list. Uh, it's probably a pretty easy guess for you guys as far as just compliment getters goes. Sauvage, the Eau de Toilette. This has Ambroxan, Bergamot, Sichuan pepper, and black pepper as some of the notes. 
and this one was released in 2015. So that actually makes Sauvage the newest fragrance on this entire list. Some of you newer guys in the fragrance community may not realize this, but when Dior Sauvage came out, it was trashed. When this was first released, people loved to hate on this fragrance. On Fragrantica, on YouTube, people in general were not impressed with Dior Sauvage, which I thought was really interesting because the first time I smelled that, uh, was not in a store, it was actually just through a, a magazine where they have the little fragrance ads and you can lift up the like, little flap and smell the fragrance. That's where I smelled this for the first time. And when I smelled it in that magazine, I was like, wow, this actually smells really good. And I know that really hardcore niche people out there are gonna hate me for saying that, but that was my initial impression. I just remember thinking to myself very vividly, like, holy hell, nobody is gonna be able to dislike that. Now, I fully realize that there are guys out there and girls that don't like Dior Sauvage. But I just remember thinking of how pleasant and people pleasing that smelled the first time that I smelled it. Sauvage is one of the very few times that I smelled a fragrance through either a tester or an ad or whatever and immediately went to the store and purchased it at full retail. This bottle right here. Does it smell synthetic? Sure. Ambroxan is the most powerful note here and it's obvious, but it's also sweet, warm, fresh, brisk, sexy. It just works. Dior Sauvage is super versatile. You can wear it in almost any situation. Very similar to another fragrance that's coming up. So number five for me, Dior Sauvage. Gonna take me to number four. It is a Mugler fragrance. This is one I have talked about in the past on other most complimented lists. For whatever reason, this one works very, very, very well off my skin. Mugler Pure Havan. Honey, tobacco, vanilla, and cacao are some of the notes here, and this one was released in 2011. Out of all the Amen flankers, if I were only going to be able to keep one, it would be this one. Pure Havan gets compared to pure malt very often, but between the two, I prefer this one. It has a really, really nice, very sweet honey cherry tobacco vibe. Pure Havan is not at all what I would call a very masculine tobacco fragrance, but for compliments, this one works great for me. It's one I wear in fall and winter primarily, and I've worn that to the office a ton over the years. It's one of those fragrances where if I'm moving around, it puts off a really pleasant scent cloud that's not overpowering, it's just a little bit sweet, pulls people into you a little bit closer, and I have consistently over the years pulled compliments while wearing that fragrance. Now that's not gonna be for everybody, again, a little bit on the sweet side of things, but if you're looking for a sweet tobacco fragrance and you have not checked that out for some reason, you should definitely do so. Huge compliment getter for me, Mugler, Pure Havan. We are in the top three now. Number three is a Chanel fragrance. It is another one that I bought at full retail. It is Chanel, Blue de Chanel, Eau de Toilette. Grapefruit, incense, ginger, lemon, and mint are some of the notes here. I've said it a million times, but Blue de Chanel is really the fragrance that helped kickstart the whole blue fragrance trend that we see nowadays. This one kind of set that off. Ultra versatile, just like Sauvage, you can wear Blue de Chanel in pretty much any situation. It has spawned two flankers, the Eau de Parfum and the Parfum version, but honestly, if I were gonna pick just one, I'd stick with the original Eau de Toilette. Extremely people-pleasing and mass appealing. This is a compliment beast. Starts off very fresh with the ginger and of course the grapefruit. And as it dries down, you get the incense note in Blue de Chanel, which is one of the main things that this is known for. I have very, very little to say negative about this fragrance. Uh, the bottle looks sleek, it looks great in a collection. The fragrance smells awesome, people love it. And I've spoken with Manny at Cascade Sense about this. Some people nowadays will call Blue de Chanel generic, which just seems kind of like a, a diss that you throw out without really thinking about. And generic typically would mean uh, it smells like other things, or at least that's how I perceive it. Generic would be something that smells like a number of other fragrances. It's not really its own thing. But when Blue de Chanel was released in 2010, what did it smell like? You could say, oh, it's too mass appealing, it's too pleasing. But what was out there when Blue de Chanel came out in 2010 that it smelled like? It smelled like its own fragrance, it was new. Now there may be things coming out now that smell similar to Blue de Chanel, but when it came out in 2010, it was its own thing. I would say the worst thing you could say about it is maybe that it's uninspired, but personally, I don't think that at all. I think it's very pleasing very versatile, it fills a great gap in lots of guys' closets out there, and it's a compliment beast. Number three, Blue Chanel Eau de Toilette. We're in the home stretch, the last two. Number two is a fragrance I've talked about a lot before, and for good reason. It's gotten me tons of compliments over the years. Dolce & Gabbana, the one, the Eau de Toilette. This fragrance came out in 2008, so that means this year it's going to be 11 years old, which to me, feels insane. Amber, tobacco, ginger, and cardamom are some of the notes in this fragrance. Dolce & Gabbana's The One is my all-time favorite date night fragrance. This did very, very well for me 
went on dates in the past. And for lots of you out there, I don't really have to go much further than that because this did very well for you too. Now there are lots of flankers of this out now. You've got the Eau de Parfum, you have the one Royal Knight, you have the one Mysterious Knight, and then the new, the one Grey. And I know that at this point, the preferred version of the one seems to be the Eau de Parfum. In terms of just compliments over the years though, the Eau de Toilette got me more because this was out for longer and I was wearing the Eau de Toilette much more than the Eau de Parfum. Projection and longevity on this may be a little bit soft, but in this circumstance that can work to your benefit because people will pick up just little whiffs of this very sexy, spicy, warm, sweet fragrance and they'll want to get a little bit closer to get a better smell. Number two on my all-time most complimented list, Dolce & Gabbana's The One Eau de Toilette. And number one, my all-time most complimented fragrance. If you were around when this was really, really popular, it's gonna make sense to you. It's from Giorgio Armani. It's Aqua de Joe, the original Eau de Toilette. This came out in 1996. And when I was working at the arcade in the local mall, like I talked about before, that was around 2003 to 2006. And Aqua de Joe was still the most popular fragrance around and everyone was wearing it. 10 years later, sea notes, lime, lemon, bergamot, orange, pretty much every single citrus that you could think of, along with a heaping dose of white flowers, specifically jasmine, are what made Aqua de Joe Aqua de Joe. It's essentially just an aquatic white floral citrus fragrance, but it was a compliment monster. I was in the mall literally seven days a week at that point in my life, talking to girls every single day. And I cannot tell you how many compliments this pulled. It seems like an exaggeration now, but it was an almost daily occurrence. Aqua de Joe ruled the world at one point. And to this point, I'm fairly certain that Aqua de Joe is the number one highest selling fragrance of all time. So while if you smell Aqua de Joe today, it's gonna smell dated to you, in its prime, this was Mike Tyson knocking people out in 15 seconds. Everyone wanted to own Aqua de Joe Everyone wanted to smell Aqua de Joe. And Aqua de Joe Pour Homme Eau de Toilette is my number one most complimented fragrance of all time. All right guys, that's gonna do it for my top 10 most complimented fragrances of all time list. And this is a list that will change over the years. You know, five years from now, some of these fragrances are gonna drop off where I've not worn them and other ones that I have worn and pulled compliments for are gonna move into the list. But as of now, this is it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support over the years. I appreciate it. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time.